Hello everyone, this is Build's Character, and today uh, my writer James Hake is joining me. We're we going to make a character. What kind of character are we going to make live? Well, Todd, you and I talked about before the show making a fantasy MI6 agent, a sort of suave spy James Bond type. First thing off the top of my head, thought it might be fun. Okay, <laughs> so let's 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 go ahead and begin. If for those that are not familiar with the show, builds character is a show where we show off basically how to build a character in D and D Beyond. So we will walk you through the, this whole process and also this character concept. So I'm just going to go ahead and go. If you want to make a character, you have to. All you have to do is go to my collections, my characters, which I'm already at, and now I need to make a character. I need to move my little window here so I can see create character. <laughs> something something there we go <laughs> it's a lot for video uh streaming video and everything else so mm. um so we're gonna go ahead and do the standard thing Wh who what is the name of this character oh that's a good question what would you name your your james bond parody fantasy character todd <laughs> <laughs> why are you flipping that back on me i'm just trying uh, to be collaborative here you know uh, uh, jareth <laughs> jareth is like always the name that comes to mind when i think of fantasy <laughs> just david bowie um jareth. let's call him let's call him jareth beyond jareth beyond <laughs> that is like the cheesiest spy name it's so good it's so good <laughs> All right, so uh, what are we using today? Because uh, when you're making a character, we have a lot of options. We have homebrew content, we've got critical role content, playtest content, which is Unearthed Arcana, and we've got Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be good to maybe have this guy be a uh, an Eberron character. I think that Eberron okay, is so sort of pulpy, spy-y, uh, techie fantasy that we want to go for with this and guy. just in case let's check playtest content as well yeah since we've got things in there um so fixed hit points we got feats allowed multi-classing requirements is is clicked on there let's not walk i don't think we need to worry about coin weight unless we're assassinating a lot of people with coins <laughs> and uh all right let's go to the next uh, section uh, cool. what do you think jareth beyond looks like We've got Ooh. multiple portraits that we can choose from or we can upload our own. See, I've I've got this kind of tickling idea in the back of my head that if if he's an Eberron guy, right. he could be a, a a changeling, right? How cool would it be for you to be a spy who can change your physical of appearance of will? Right. Um But of course he's very, probably got very much it reminds me of the Witcher and how creepy that doppelganger is. Oh my god, yeah. Oh, the Witcher doppelganger was spooky. Oh, that that performance was fantastic. So, uh, let's. I feel like this person is. Yeah, what a handsome man. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a beautiful man right there. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we've got that all filled out. So let's go. We're just going to hit the tab. We're going to go over to race. What race? Mm -hmm. You've already kind of tipped your hat here. You're talking so. about changeling. I think that would be a cool place to start. Changeling is a very cool place to start. Um. So, so what do we get from changeling? Plus two charisma, plus one to an ability score of your choice. Shape changer, that makes sense. Changeling instincts. Don't know what. Changeling. Yeah, I don't recall. Change oh, that just gives you more proficiency. You, you can choose from deception, insight, or intimidation and nice. persuasion. So you are very already geared towards the spy trade. Yeah, I feel like. Okay, so so what do we know about James Bond, right? He's he's good at playing cards. He plays poker in a couple of movies. He he's he's a seductive type of guy. Uh, he's though that's that's kind of the power fantasy right there, right? Yeah, uh, he, he doesn't necessarily do a lot of intimidation. No, he's he's not a he's not a he he's got a concealed gun, right? He's not the he's not a strong arm guy, right? And honestly, he's quite often not figuring out the plot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, right. he's not always very deceptive either. He walks into a situation, and he says, Bond, James Bond, and that's it. <laughs> you know? That's true, but he's good at cards and he's good at like you know bluffing his way into things. Uh so mm -hmm. do you feel yeah. this do you feel like uh deception and persuasion? 
yeah no one's yeah. ever intimidated by him by the way like no one's like oh god james bond is coming everyone like every villain's like i'm going to kill you <laughs> he's got like the opposite of this of intimidation yeah he's very unintimidating that would be a fun skill overconfidence mm. giving other people overconfidence would be pretty amazing that would be neat maybe that's his deception yeah okay deception and persuasion i like those okay uh what do you think the other ability score should be Hmm. that's interesting it already says that your charisma score is increased by two in addition one ability score of your choice increases by one okay yeah, i'm actually showing it that i can choose charisma again which is interesting that is interesting i wonder if that's I'm aware of another race that allows you to get a plus three off the bet now a triple dip it did it hmm. so i feel um, like not to put all our eggs in one on charisma basket you know yeah Agreed. No, dexterity is good he, strength could be fine uh even constitution um i think those are all good what kind of weapon do you envision this person using hmm. obviously i think of a, a hand crossbow right off the bat okay. but you know maybe if, if he's an eberron then you know they've got uh they've got this thing where you like you've got a wand holster right you kind of like instead of being a gunslinger you kind of whip out a wand and okay. shoot a couple of things out of that yeah let's let's go dexterity okay. we'll we'll figure out the specifics down the line but let's go dexterity for now okay so languages. this is this is important uh languages are a big deal it's nice that Oof. you get two and we've got a lot of choices here hmm. uh, so, i feel like obviously like uh, yeah hmm so, so we're in Eberron, though. Yeah, so Eberron's is, right, it's a nation that's just had its, like, World War I equivalent, and Bond's kind of more of a Cold War guy, but that's okay. Um, it's It's got all of these nations that are not at each other's throats yet, but they could be if things go the wrong way. And so we've seen uh, Bond go all across the world. He goes to all across Europe. He's got Russian adversaries. Who's the Russia <laughs> of this setting? If if oh, I, I don't know. I don't know what is the Russia of. Uh... Oh, Zemin is here. That's fantastic. Um, I guess they're just all in there. Let's go with. Uh... Let's go with Elvish because you got to have Elvish. It would yeah okay that's fair. Um... <laughs> And You're going to find a lot of old artifacts, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Wari would be very interesting. Ooh. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. That's spooky. That's a, that's a, that's a bit like, it's like a hair out of our, our James Bond pastiche, but I kind of like that. That gives it like a, a certain Who are the Kuari? Kuari? They're, they are the native denizens of the Plane of Dreams, Dalcor. Uh, and they're one of my favorite parts of Eberron, and they're spooky as hell. Uh, so, yeah, Quarry is an awesome choice. Wouldn't it be creepy to be an almost an agent of that? Ooh. But it is also, like, an interest. Like, it is an interesting way to just, like, come out there and, like, I know this language. Like, because Elvish is so very basic, kind of, yeah. right, to know. Yeah. But then you know this, and that that's, like, heaps of backstory. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what if there totally could be a sort of cold war thing going on in eberron between the nations of corvair and the sort of other otherworldly threat it's like you know there's no active conflict now but everyone is is stacking uh defenses higher and higher trying to avoid mm -hmm. uh, something like that happening so it would absolutely be and a plus, good thing it, yeah it's, it's such a strange language i think um I don't know if I'm my video is wigging out. I think my Zoom looks very strange on my end, but um, you look fine to me. Yeah, you. Uh, well, thank you. I did my best this morning. Uh, <laughs> just a fresh, freshly shaved head. Uh, so yeah, I think that's really great. I think it's also like a good. It's not thieves can't, but it's also obscure enough to be like pretty useful if you're trying to like talk talk without someone absolutely knowing what you're saying. okay here comes the tough part this is the big stuff don't We've mess got a lot up. of good choices here yeah um so i think that there you know there's a great great case for rogue in here right there are a lot of good rogue subclasses that support this kind of character the pardon me the swashbuckler fits that uh heightened Bondian feel. Uh, I think the Inquisitive Rogue makes for a good spy in general. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but the the one that I'm gravitating towards right now is the College of Whispers Bard. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we're going to go there, are we? Okay. Uh, for those that don't know, this is the creepiest bard ever invented. So we are going to click bard, and this makes a lot of sense. I actually play a whisper bard um, as Tom Waits with a Tom Waits voice. Mm. Yeah, I, I quite enjoy that character. Bards are the jack of all trades. This and is I think we could start this guy out at third level, right? Bards get third class yeah. at third well, level. Yeah, yeah we're not good. We're, yeah, absolutely. Not going to make a first level character. <laughs> Why would we do this? Uh, what? Now, it, it is certainly part of, and we, you don't have to always flavor it this way, but it's always going to give you a lot of musical instruments if you're a bard. <laughs> there are bards. Okay, listen. The bard. Uh, didn't play an instrument that is mm. that is Shakespeare mm -hmm. um, there's oratory bards that I, I deeply love like Chaucer mm. um, in the Knight's Tale or um, well I did eh. I like the bard from 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 the Witcher actually quite a lot <laughs> oh, Yeskir is great <laughs> yeah, yeah it's hard to beat Yeskir but I love a good um, speech yes that's true Hmm. Yeah. So bagpipe seems interesting, though. <laughs> actually, James Bond is Scottish. That's a fun <laughs> Sean Connery joke right there. Yeah. All right. Let's. Add, let's add, yeah. This let's, is a bagpipe video that. just for fun. <laughs> um. Um. I feel like uh. Ooh, a dulcimer. I'm trying to think of if the, if he ever actually like plays an instrument in one of his films. I. I. I I can't think of any off the top of my head. No, I mean, there's no like piano equivalent. I he's got to play the piano at times, right? Yeah, he's got because I, I don't think he like he. I, I could see him playing the lute. I don't. The horn is a little off, right? Huh. Like, um, the drum is super weird. <laughs> so it's got to be something complex. Yeah, we choose a veal. That's yeah. a good one. And I don't know. Let's say let's say the flute. The flute. Cool. <laughs> Just little, just little skills that uh, oh, Jared just, Beyond has in his back pocket. That just made me realize the next part I want to build. <laughs> I want to build the saxophone man from Lost Boys. <laughs> Sorry, distraction. Uh, I still believe. <laughs> All right, so back, back in it. Skills. Okay, skills. What are our options here? Looks like we have all oh them. all of them, <laughs> right? Because we're playing a bard. <laughs> um, so I don't think Bond is actually a very uh, acrobatic kind of guy, but he is fairly athletic. I think of the opening scene of Casino Royale all the time, where yeah. Daniel Craig's Bond is chasing down the guy in like this construction yard, and like this guy is constantly slipping away from him and like getting up this rickety looking construction yeah you're tower. right bond yeah. is like constantly grabbing eye beams by his fingertips and slamming himself into these things yeah uh, he's not a creature of grace yeah no but but he is athletic i think athletics is a good yeah good pick here i i totally agree i think that's a good point because we've seen characters like that he's not he's not parkour i would say james <laughs> yeah. born you know, james born Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason Bourne it, it, for sure. J sorry, Jason Bourne is definitely more acrobatics. Mm. Well, I don't know. You're right. He just throws himself into things. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So this may be someone who stitches themselves up a lot. Yeah, so, I, I was just thinking of that too. Actually, medicine would be a good pick, um, especially if you don't want to go to clerics and you don't have the option to go to a hospital in Eberron. Yeah, because you've got to be. You know, you're undercover. You do have healing magic, certainly. So mm -hmm. you're probably already aware to keep that up. But like, yeah. I don't know. Maybe you need to know how to do. Well, let's. We got a lot of other things we that are very stealth, important. We've right? got sleight of hand seems exceptionally important. It does. You think? You think it's more important than stealth? I think they're both exceptionally important. <laughs> I I don't know how to make this character without both. Hmm. I think we should pick sleight of hand and stealth, and maybe ditch medicine for now. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we can make up for that in the spell choices. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. Give him a cure wounds or something. That makes sense. Okay. So of course we have our spell casting. Now remember everyone that um, when you're building a character on D and D Beyond, you have your class features, but then you have this other section right here, and that's where your spells are. And we'll get we'll get to this soon. 
-hmm. but uh, it's something that you can sometimes easily forget, but just click spells and then you will start adding the spells that you know and the spells that you prepare. Yeah, it is easy to just skip past that by mistake. Um, now what's okay. re I, what I love about this spy being a bard is the jack of all trades thing. I mean, you've got basically half proficiency in all of this. Like, yeah. <laughs> so even if you're bad at something, you're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's stuff. I mean, that, that's great for a sort of like single player game even, you know? Mm -hmm. Bond doesn't usually work with the team. At best, he has like you know q back home giving him some kind of gadget exactly uh, q is your artificer who is like handing you infused items to make yes. sure that you can make this character you know sing which oh god i want to play this campaign now <laughs> yes. oh my god a a secret service everon yeah on on his majesty's secret service in everon that would be amazing yeah that'd be fantastic so we already chose um uh, we're going to choose the college of whispers mm -hmm. which you get to choose at third level when you're playing a bard um mm -hmm. as you see we have a lot of options here we have college of glamour we have college of lore college of swords college of valor college of whispers and then we indicate when something is unearthed arcana it's being currently play tested for you to learn you know it's it's not official content yet and it may become official content and that's the college of creation and eloquence but we are going with college of whispers mm -hmm. The creepiest bard. I have not read College of Eloquence in depth lately. I might want to look. That I, one yeah, again. I need to revisit that because I do like to speechify my role playing. Um, yeah. I'm struggling between a monosyllable, like a, someone who never speaks, like a rune knight, or someone who speaks too much <laughs> in between my next character. But yeah. Um, so this is, let's go ahead and take a look at what that gets us because once you make that choice, and remember you get bardic inspiration so even if you're failing at something or someone else's you can add your your bardic inspiration die 1d6 to help assist mm -hmm. make this happen anyways that really works for james bond he's always like just barely getting through things mm -hmm. yeah. um it does it does say one creature other than yourself other than if yourself I, if, if i were playing like a, a one person game if i were playing a solo game uh, I would I would like ask my DM, hey, can I like use Bardic Inspiration on myself, please? Yeah, <laughs> it's interesting, but it it does kind of provoke the idea that he can help someone near him. And there, this is the tragedy of James Bond: is he always convinces people to help him, almost in a constant oh, like, way. Oh my God, you're right. To do an action, and then they'll be successful at it. But once he's out of the room, that person inevitably gets killed. Yeah, these people always pay pay the price for him. For him off camera yeah and that's almost or like or on camera sometimes or sometimes too. well, well yeah. i mean like you know out of his range of view mm -hmm. and so it's almost like you know these people feel all heroic and inspired when he's around but you know once push comes to shove they almost always die yeah yeah that's that's the the tragedy of james bond it really is i ma i managed to make bardic inspiration dark and i'm pretty proud of that right now how you feeling uh, that's chat the how you thing i've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> sorry chat i apologize i'm just just doing my job uh expertise now this allows you to double any of your ability oh god why would you not play a bard or a rogue sometimes I, I honestly wonder your proficiency is doubled for any ability check that you're making for these two skills that we choose what's the most important thing for bond oh my gosh it, stealth for sure he's got to have stealth. yeah he's always like watching the secret you know the enemy talk about their evil plans yeah. And I think he needs one of those two charisma skills, either deception or persuasion. He mm. persuades everybody. Persuasion. Like he gets into yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> he's I mean, like for, for all of our, our talk of like suave James Bond, he, he really is kind of a blunt instrument, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's not great at the deception, but he does talk his way into a lot of situations pretty yeah. rapidly. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like Judy Dench's uh, M call, called him a blunt instrument at one point. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm sure that quote is just lodged in the back of my head somewhere. For those at home, interesting note, um, I have it on good authority that Judy Dench plays D&D, &D, and that is largely because of Vin Diesel and oh. uh, Tim, 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 Tawathi from uh, Chronicles of Riddick. So that's right. I would love to. Oh get God! Judy yeah, if I could some, play a game with I mean... Judy Dench, I'd... <laughs> <laughs> what a dream! <laughs> this... All right, I retire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to get. 
it's not gonna get weirder it's not gonna get better i played D with like uh, queen elizabeth yeah. twice yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you know like it's just it's just crazy um so psychic okay, blades so what are these whispers abilities yeah so when you're in the college of whispers you can hit a creature with a weapon attack and you can expend one use of your bardic inspiration to deal 2d6 psychic damage to that target you can do so only once per round on your turn psychic damage then increases um larger and larger and larger as time goes on now wow but you just always have that whoa yeah. i've forgotten about how good that was well you do have to expend your bardic inspiration but yeah yeah it's 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 mean it's it, it's you're 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 doing some damage um, my only thing that I would know is that the Unearthed Arcana Soul Knife is the only thing that's the creepiest assassin mm. because it leaves no weapon. It leaves no scars. Yeah. Um, it yeah. leaves no uh, actual physical wounds, but we're not, too, we're not worried about that here. Mm -hmm. This one, like you could, you could leave a, a wound that doesn't look lethal. Like mm -hmm. you, you stab him in the, in the thigh or something, but suddenly, you know, their, their brain short circuits. Whoa. And it's interesting that we didn't choose intimidation for some, for for basically a character class a subclass that is so intimidating. So, mm -hmm. um, can you walk us through words of terror? You words of terror third level as well. Yeah, at third level, you learn to infuse innocent seeming words with an insidious magic that can inspire terror. If you speak to a humanoid alone for at least one minute, you can attempt to seed paranoia in its mind. At the end of the conversation, the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC or be frightened of you or another creature of your choice. The target is frightened in this way for one hour until it is attacked or damaged or until it witnesses its allies, its oh, or until it witnesses its allies being attacked or damaged. If the target succeeds on saving throw, it has no hint that you tried to frighten it. Recharges on a short or a long rest. This is very like Batman Arkham Asylum in its way. You're kind of like slinking through the shadows and mm -hmm. like just having that intimidating uh, aura around you. I I do like the way that um, it is. It is that moment where like maybe James Bond does like scare the crap out of somebody. He doesn't have yeah. a lot of them, but this is when he goes super dark. And I yeah. like that we don't we didn't put a lot of points in intimidation. Um, it makes this more of a surprise. It makes this more of like a, a story makes it, it makes it scarier, almost. right? Like yeah. we didn't make an intimidation character. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I saw in chat that someone uh, someone said that we could even make College of Glamour for James Bond, and that's more, much more of a sort of Sean Connery Bond. Yeah. This one is much more of a sort of Daniel Craig Bond, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, I I, I love Daniel Craig as James yeah. Bond. I'm sorry. I'm just. I, uh, uh, am I saying he's my favorite? I don't want to offend the universe, but <laughs> it's a dangerous thing to say. He's pretty I, great. Yeah, I'm not sure if Craig's my favorite Bond, but the Casino Royale is for sure my favorite film. You know, weirdly, uh, I do like Timothy Dalton now, not as James Bond, but I like I love him in Penny Dreadful. No, mm. Penny Dreadful. Penny. Yeah, yeah, Penny Dreadful. He uh, fantastic in that actually. Um, I haven't seen Penny Dreadful. I, I should get on that. If you want some dark stuff. Penny Dreadful. Um, it's pretty dark and werewolfy and all kinds of things. Isn't, isn't what's her name in the this new season? The uh, Marjorie Terrell. Yeah, she's know. in the new the new. It's kind of a revamp where it's mm. in Los Angeles. Very cool. I love that. I, I love that actor. You, or she I is fantastic. Okay, ability scores. There we go. There we go. I'm back. One of us is back. Are we all back? Uh, how do you how do you like to do this? Man, I mean, manual is very strange. Uh, standard array point by. Um, I'm I'm fine with standard array. I honestly I I don't feel like I need to fiddle around with point by too much unless it, the situation really demands it. Right. I'm really trying to min max. Right. <laughs> um, okay. So we've talked about uh, what are what's this character's inherent charisma bonus? It's plus two, right? Yeah, it's gonna be high. Yeah. Okay. So we should drop a fourteen in charisma. This yeah, guy's got to be charismatic because there's no reason for us to go for a seventeen in that. Yeah. Um, as long as we've got a plus one bonus to Dex, I feel like we should. Well, we've talked about how he's not particularly like agile and graceful. I think it might like it might be interesting if we put something like an eleven in dexterity, enough to be a little bit a little bit dexterous, but okay. not not to be a total or a 13 maybe but not to be a total uh 
acrobat. Okay, yeah, so that's going to bring it to a full 14, so that's good. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking about playing the 15? Oops. Hmm. I feel like, weirdly enough, Constitution. I know, yeah. it's weird. Yeah, you, you're uh, reading my mind right there. takes a beating. <laughs> yeah, like he, he gets poised. Well, this wasn't James Bond. This is a totally different British spy series. But there is a, a scene where a guy is uh, drinking in a bar, and he's just chugging down this uh, glass of whiskey or something, and he sees at the bottom of the glass someone has put uh, a label on it that says, uh, you have just been poisoned and his eyes go wide and he uh, tells the bartender to keep keep giving him drinks, keep the drinks coming and he just downs an insane amount of alcohol and then he staggers over to the toilet and wretches his entire oh system God. out and like, ah, oh, that's, that's such perfect spy stuff. You know? uh, well, I mean, Casino Royale, he does realize suddenly that he has been poisoned and he has to... Um find some kind of like it's in the car like he realized he needs to make oh, it in the car right, so right. Like, he starts sweating because he's having a heart attack yeah. yeah 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 so he's 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 about to die oh my gosh yeah constitution for sure yeah <laughs> and the torture <laughs> scene also oh my god <laughs> speaking of which i love mads mickelson too one of my favorite actors i remember uh, that, that really right put him on my like radar yeah um, and then i saw him in a very creepy viking film which i'm forgetting right now where it's really like uh you know dreaming into the heart of darkness kind mm. of thing where yeah where he, uh, and mads was great in hannibal too i feel like we've gotten off track a little bit <laughs> yeah but constitution for sure yes constitution for sure he should have not um, the wisest guy he's perceptive but boy <laughs> I, I feel like a 12 in wisdom is good really because then we got we got 8 <laughs> 10 and 12 what are we anymore? doing here uh <laughs> you know i think it might be interesting to put an eight in wisdom i think that might actually be the right choice okay i mean he's insightful to people's but that's his part of his persuasion like he's insightful mm-hmm. to like he, he, and really he does. totally he is kind of a he, i don't want to say he's a doof but he does like he's constantly not aware of the plot he's, he's got this really like shov- chauvinistic uh i don't touch confidence streak so like yeah. he, there's a lot of stuff that he actually misses really hard yeah um i think he's an intelligence 12 strength yeah i think he has i think he's got 12 strength but he, yeah he, he's fit he's healthy he's got a good con He's yeah. not necessarily the smartest per- person in the room. I think this yeah. combination of actually not amazing intelligence and wisdom makes sense for this character. Hey, you know, can we actually bump his level up to four? I want to drop like one feet on this guy. Whoa. All right. We'll go back to class. We'll go over here and we will press four. And now we have ability score improvement. And here you can choose to either improve your ability scores twice or a feet so what feet are we thinking Um, a lot yeah there's a lot of choices the one that popped into my hand in my head is not exactly a uh maybe (laughs) optimal choice we shall say but i i thought of the the tavern brawler feet basically as a grappler feet because he, a lot of fights a lot that of that, gets yeah, into, yeah. he's like totally hand-to-hand combat even how though he's, this he's psychic what does this how psychic blades when you reach fourth level with a weapon attack huh? yeah wait 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 so <laughs> so technically anything you grab is a weapon am i wrong <laughs> <laughs> look at the tavern brawler feed i i think you're right i think you can like it, it gives you a lot of skill with improvised weapons you're proficient with improvised weapons yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh yes we have found something magical and special and i love it forever is this optimized i doubt it but boy i, I love don't it care. you're hitting someone with like a psychic rock you yeah. are hitting people with a psychic uh bar glass you're you're you're, everything now is a potentially dangerous weapon in your hand this is this is fun this this is fun um did i freeze again uh yeah your video is frozen but yeah your audio is just fine oh okay good so i think this is brilliant yeah i just Mm -hmm. couldn't hear um joey so we've 
Wow. I really love this. I'm in love with this now. This is such a brilliant feat to put onto here. You can improvise any weapon around you. You're always deadly. You're almost like a monk now, right? Like you're yeah, a little bit. All right. Um, and oh, we, get, and to... we get to choose strength or constitution. Oh, um, con so our strength well, is an even number right now. I it think, is. Like, so well, let's, the constitution let's go con. is a 15. Yeah. All right. That's good. Tough. This is a bard with hit points right now. Yeah, this is a very, I don't care about optimized builds, though I would argue this is pre-optimized because you can just sit there in the room and not be horribly worried about anything now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, do we get anything else? I don't okay. think so. Uh, yeah, I, We should go back to spells now. So yeah. we've got our abilities selected and now we've got like 12 strength, we've got 14 dexterity. We're tough, constitution. We, you know, James Bond gets the crap kicked out of him all the time. All the time. All the time. Super high charisma. That's really good. I'm 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 really happy with yeah. All that. So spell selection. This is a biggie. So you've got right. your known spells, and then you can add spells. Yeah. So bards are a class. The spell casting is super different for all classes, but uh, yeah. the way bards do it is they know their spells. Right. It's like memorizing a a, a tune, um, and so. You can only switch out these spells that you know when you gain a level. So one one spell swapped out per level in addition to the new ones you get. So let's take a look. I, I have some strong feelings. First off, silence. Absolutely, yeah. You can shut down other spellcasters, clerics. You know, you're moving exceptionally quietly. Yeah, I like that. Um, hmm. Zone of Truth is pretty... Zone of Truth... <laughs> It could be good. Locate object depends on what your type of thing is. Yeah, if your campaign is a, a sort of MacGuffin heavy spy campaign, I could see locate object being really good. Enthrall. He's got to have enthrall, right? <laughs> Let's look at enthrall. You weave distracting strings of words to creatures of choice to see within the range. On a failed save, but all does enthrall their uh, perception checks. Um, yeah, you're just basically people all all eyes on you. Yeah, he's doing he's doing a distraction. Well, well, the person that he's got got on his team for the for the film is working behind the scenes. Um, da, 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 I don't really weirdly. I feel like he calms people's emotions a lot. Like he talks people's people down, but I don't want to get too in the weeds on that. Right. Um, Sleep might be a thing sort of like a feather like fall a stun for gun. yeah feather I, fall oh my gosh she's falling out of buildings all the time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. This, is your, <laughs> this is your magical parachute yes <laughs> disguise self oh well, he's take a look at this guy's self let's pop it open because he's already a changeling he's already able to change uh, that's appearance, good point but this lets you change your clothing and armor also yeah mm -hmm. I feel like because we have so few spells, we might want to hold off on this one. He can do a quick change with actual clothes. Yeah. He's got to have cure wounds. He's going it alone. He's got to Yeah, he's got to have that. He's got to repair all that damage. Vicious, vicious mockery? I, he does talk some mad smack. Yeah, I mean, he, any bard's got to have vicious mockery, no matter what concept we're trying to pull off. Yeah. Um, uh, how many cantrips do we get, by the way? Let's see. Uh, if we look up here, we get three cantrips okay. and we get seven spells. Oh, friends. Maybe the friends can. cantrip is rough because they like learn, they know after it ends that you dupe them. Yeah, but, like, which that's... I love actually for this character. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I think you're right. Mage Hand also. Mage Hand looks about right. Oh, the message is really good too. That's like the uh, earpiece, you know? Yeah, it is. Um, but someone might be c casting that to you. Not mm. you casting it to someone else. Well, Mage I'll Hand. Bet, you know, um, I'll, I'll bet that's that's a gadget that Q would give you, right? You get like a sending stone. Oh, it's hard. Right. You don't get everything you want. Um, <laughs> I mean, you are, we do have a high persuasion though already. Is this is having friends? Hmm. Okay, let's let's cut friends for now. Let's let's stick with message instead of friends. Okay. I think you could totally go either way on this one. Yeah, I would even go pre, pre I can't say it. Uh, <laughs> you know, because he's got a lot of blood all over him and stuff. He's good at hiding. Yeah. We won't. What if we did, uh, do we have suggestion on this list? Oh, man. Uh, let's see. We can go up to, yeah, it's got to be here. Um, 
Yeah, there. suggestion yes. sounds about right. Yep, it's good. We got shatter pyrotechnics. Locate object is pretty solid if you've been there to you know knock. Even though it's not very stealthy, no, that's but absolutely he's done the it. sort of break down the door type of espionage that we're looking for. Well, if you can change, it doesn't matter, right? Like yeah. you're on the guards, and you're like, I don't know how this door opened. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, invisibility, invisibility is really tempting. It is. We're super like second level spell heavy right now. We're yeah. gonna run out of spell slots and be dead in the water. And so that's the the temptation of second level. Mm -hmm. um long strider can make sense in some situations could um, could identify can make it mm. it's a really hard one this is one of the perfect classes for a spy actually yeah detect uh, thoughts it's go, go back to those first level spells i kind of oh yeah see. sorry i'm just sorry i'm all about the second level <laughs> they're, they're so seductive those second Fairy level fire spells. is pretty great um Fairy fire is good um, i do like distort value a little bit remember when he does the switcheroo with the egg oh this is a very long time ago there was like a <laughs> fa fa i can't say a Faberge egg or something like that one of the <laughs> russian eggs and he actually like looks at it and he's got a pamphlet and then he's got the fake egg ah uh, um, nice but yeah. i don't remember that one that must have been from it's very it's older than me <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah let me see that distort value uh spell i think that's one of the acquisitions incorporated ones it is a very sneaky thing so you you uh you cast a spell on an object no longer than a foot um and you up the perceived value of it by quite a lot you know interesting uh, they have to make an investigation check but uh maybe i mean like you are like if you're trying to pretend like you're an arms dealer in eberron right maybe you're trying to make stuff look like it's not what it is that could be cool i'm on board with that that's a real off the beaten path spell i like putting it on there i oh that's seven spells that's what that's all she wrote Ooh, wow well, that was a hard choice but i think that's um it's interesting i mean we could have gone you know identify we could have done illusory script mm -hmm sleep certainly you know pretending like you're hitting people with sleep darts that's not always going to be helpful for you and if you're doing you, know, you could probably sneak in anyways you don't need to probably necessarily do it though wow sleep walking in as a guard and hitting sleep on somebody mm -hmm. you know because you're already disguised and you're yeah. like well i do need to blow up the place though and i think you're going to notice so <laughs> yeah there's there's absolutely a lot of spells that like you would want to swap out maybe when you gain a level you're like oh well this mission doesn't exactly have the yeah. need for distort value so let's take pyrotechnics or sleep this, this or shatter is a, this is kind of a, a, a character concept that's a victim of too many choices um mm. you know uh so i feel we know what this is yeah <laughs> criminal slash spy yeah okay. <laughs> no no question <laughs> you are an experienced cr criminal with a history of breaking the law you have spent a lot of time among criminals you have a lot of contacts in the criminal underworld. Mm -hmm. um, so this is very helpful. And we get thieves tools. Nice. Um, and we can choose some extra stuff. A lot of extra mm. stuff. A lot of other skills open to us. I think that's because we've... Uh, there are skills on the spy list to begin with that we have already taken. So they're just yeah. giving us another choice. Uh, investigation is important. You know, investigation, I like it. We could even take insight also. That might be good. Or, yeah. or perception. Insight or perception. Oof. Mm. Insight is the intelligence, which might need that boost. But perception is... Well, I mean, they both do. Yeah. Uh, he's perceptive. He's always glaring at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like perception kind of suits a, a bond type better than, uh, better than insight. He, he's he's just so confident and cocksure always that he never really tries to uh, incite his way through people. He just kind of is, is sure that he's got them uh, playing cards. Absolutely, <laughs> though. Though I would say three dragon three dragon ante in a D and D world is kind of the equivalent of hold and poker. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, because you can do a generic playing card set. Um, but yeah, dragon three three dragon ante yep. set makes a lot. He's of the sense. best poker player in MI six. So three dragon ante for sure uh so um, and well, you know we could absolutely do those uh character detail things but 
Yeah. Yeah, but that's I all. That's we... also free form. And now we we I'm not even adding any equipment, right? Well, let's you know inventory. You can go here. Uh, I high, highly recommend. Let's see, starting equipment. Let's see what um, the starting equipment for this bard could be. Um, Add items. You know, this is the sort of campaign where our DM is just just going to say yes or no. Yeah. Burglar's pack is probably a good idea. Yeah. Is there another pack that works better? No. <laughs> scholar's pack. A scholar's pack. Okay. Um, yeah. Burglar's pack. Absolutely. Okay. So, so you got you got some of that here. gear. Um, what if we get one uncommon magical item? Yeah. Hey, do you wanna um do you wanna uh open up a new tab and look at the magic items in uh Eberron Rising from the Last War? Just so we can see it. I kind of may have trouble out. screen sharing that. Um Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Huh? Well, I'm just not yeah. yeah. Uh am I doing it live right now? Can everyone see it? Oh they can. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um so let's see under sources yeah yeah yeah. sorry um so i you want i need to go to tool no i don't um yeah right, sorry i've got my own window in front of things so it's making it a little difficult okay so oh, we're okay. looking at magical items mm -hmm. we we'll go down here click magical items and now let's go Show advanced filters. So this is super mm -hmm. handy, and I love this kind of thing. So we're going to go to source, and we are going to go to Eberron, the rising from the last war. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to filter all magical items. This will give us that very spy-specific stuff. Um, our, our game our propulsion, game propulsion arm. arm. <laughs> very rare. Ooh, and probably, probably not uh, the way would, okay, uh, very, only oh, for Warforged. Yeah. Not, not the, I, I would definitely do Arm Blade if I was playing Assassin's Creed, if we were making that character. Yeah, yeah. Um, and tentacle tentacle whip. whip. Earworm. Ear What's an earworm? Attuned to this symbiote and you uh. have... Uh, <laughs> That's horrifying. That is horrifying. Oh, dissonant. It has charges in it. Ooh, this is very like. What is this? Uncommon though. I'm very tempted. That's I mean, that's great for like an enemy of Bond, right? They've they've got that that worm in their ear that's giving all of their information. Well, back this is them. literally like the opposite of like. No, this is like you know, like we talk about the earpiece and the importance mm -hmm. in James Bond, right? Like, but he puts this earworm in here and he uses it to detect thoughts or to cast dis dissonant whispers. Yeah, that's kind of great. Yeah, but look at this other thing. It it sends all of this information back to a nearby Dale Kier, which is kind of oh, this, yeah, this yeah, spooky yeah. Eberron type okay. uh, villain. Uh, these are some these common ones are very much sort of like the binders uh, goggles everyday items because Eberron is a very uh, magical, right. magically rich society. So we've got finder goggles, though it only adds a D4 to our insight checks. Um, it does allow us to cast locate creature, which, wow, totally. Mm. I mean, that's I like a strong that. contender. I like that. Okay. What else do we have? Let's keep that in our back pocket. Take a look at some other stuff. Finders goggles. Living gloves, what? No. <laughs> I already <laughs> know, no. Um... Let's see what else. Uh, orb of shielding, prosthetic limb. Someone's asking in chat if we can sort by rarity. Yes, we can sort by rarity, but uh, we just kind of want to go just through. Looking at all We're looking at it all anyway, so no reason. Ventilating lungs are interesting had we been in some kind of attack. Um, oh, yeah. Man, I would do that for a darker assassin. If you have mm. ventilating lungs and yeah. you poison an entire room all the time or something like that, that's oh my gosh, pretty dark stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, let's let's go let's go with those goggles. That sounds yeah, cool. Yeah, those, those goggles feel feel good. Um. So let's see. Uh, I did that. I did go ahead and add a dagger. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Even though <laughs> I love the idea of hitting someone with everything, but. Uh, <laughs> So finders goggles, we've got them right here. Yeah, gonna add them. 
And then we go up to our inventory. We've got a lot of things. We will go ahead and put use on the finder's goggles. Mm -hmm. And we'll go put wield on the dagger. You know, let's give him a set of studded leather armor. He may be all decked out in that suit, but he's got Kevlar under it, you know. Yeah, leather Kevlar. <laughs> I, don't re I don't recommend it. Um, but yeah, certainly uh, cast off studded leather armor. So like, you know, you know when you Let's need go a game, with normal studded leather <laughs> oh come on like he's just like no i have to i have like a, a tuxedo oh wait actually underneath. no you're totally right that's a great idea yeah not smoldering <laughs> <laughs> lightly singed studded leather armor yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh oh no wait 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 uh let's let's pretend we've got a very permissive dm He's got glamoured studded leather armor. Oh he's no, got what does that do? That it, even... You can change it to look like other clothing. So he's got studded leather that looks like a tuxedo. Wait, is that real? Yeah. Oh my god, let me check. Okay, why well, don't? I feel like I always know everything about D&D because &D I obsessively read everything over and over again. I'm a little surprised I don't know. Beneath all this resistance armor, there it is, glamoured. What? Is this from Eberron? Mm -mm. I think this is standard DMG. You're kidding me. <laughs> Flew right under the radar. Yeah, wow, you can get glamoured on. Never, uh, being a, wow, playing a trickster god for like 40 years, you think? Three yeah. years, 30 years, not 40 years. Uh, okay, yeah, this makes a lot more sense. Yeah, glamoured armor rocks. All right, so we go to our inventory. Uh, we're going to unwear the cast off armor and we'll actually get rid of it, but we'll wear glamoured armor. I go down to, let me see. How do I remove active items? So I think you can do it from the character sheet. Yeah, I, there, there, I don't know why I'm, I, I know I've done it in here uh, plenty of times. So I don't know why I'm not seeing it necessarily. Now, oh, maybe is, you, maybe you is, click on it. Uh, I think, oh yeah, you're totally right. So, um, there we go. And then we go here. Remove, Remove item. item, there we go. Yep. All right, Easy we peasy, we're just done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finder's goggles we attune to. Doop. Yes. There you go. Some magical items you have to spend some time with to learn or like just harness, you know, your weave needs to kind of suffuse itself with the magical item itself and then you have better sense. So this is our James Bond character for D&D. There he is, Jareth Beyond. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst. Oh my God, I love that name. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Um we can do a number of other things. This is an interesting backdrop. I'm not quite sure how that happened. Yeah, it looks like slumbering. Uh, yeah, interesting. Um, so let's go change backdrop. Change that backdrop. Make it a little bit less circus party and more. So we've got tons of stuff from different books that we can use as backgrounds. Um, Explorer's Guide. Um, oh, yeah. Let's find really got to learn my acronyms. That's is there's weird. Eberron. Is there like a is there like a city of Sharn background that we have for Eberron? Something that has got that big sort of like cityish look to it. This is the Explorer's Guide to Wildmount. This is uh, Eberron the Rising from the Last War. War. That's eh, I don't actually see anything too city-ish here. A little bit. Uh, it's a little Not bit grim really. and warlike. It's a little dark. Yeah. Oh, weirdly, weirdly. Oh, there we go. Ooh. There's something there. Hey, that's something. Yeah, cool. Let's go with it. Uh, yeah, we'll go yeah. and stick there. Now, there's a lot of frames you can use. Um, they're gonna look a little wonky right now because we're we have a certain frame limit on Zoom. So, oh, is um, that so? What's really yeah? Because you're not because these are moving at 30 frames per second, but we're moving at like 15, right? So uh... With screen share. So there's like animated. <laughs> blinking eyes you know uh and stuff like that yeah there are things that move faster uh if you gears wanted them cogs. like like yeah gear, gears with cogs there's a there's so much fun stuff i actually get rather Whoa, obsessed i haven't i haven't seen the the eberron or not eberron the wild mount ones yet yeah the, oh it's lovely 
I should have gotten right on that. Yeah, this one actually whoa, has like the Luxon yeah. Beacon. Whoa. It's looking oh, weird. It's looking weird here, but like, yeah, it, it, it has like there's mist and stuff. And, oh, and obviously cool. I understand that these look purely smooth, perfectly smooth, um, not on live stream. So they they, they do uh yeah, they are pretty cool. Um no, the wild mother. <laughs> oh, the Clovis Concord one looks pretty cool. Yeah, actually. yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Actually. I like that. Yeah. Uh, this is a character who has an unarmed strike of 1d4 plus 1 and a tavern brawler strike of 1d4 plus 1. Um, they can add their psychic damage. Proof. Their psychic blades, no longer blades, psychic anything to do damage to their enemy. Um, That's so cool. It, it's, uh, I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of this. This is a very good idea of yours here, uh, Joey. I, James Hike. <laughs> yeah. I call you Joey. Yeah. Um, Words of Terror is, is fantastic and creepy. Um, let's see where we can go from here. And we've got about nine minutes. If we have any questions in chat, let us know. But here's another nice feature um, that I adore. If you want to mess with this character, you can always uh, make a copy. Um, that's always mm -hmm. really handy if you if you're like ah maybe i could have done this differently but available when you go down here when you're in your character class you can go down and look at available at higher levels and this is always nice so it lets you know where you're going like font mm. of inspiration yeah where will this guy go yeah you get to you get a little bit more bardic inspiration that allows you a little bit more spite you know uh, oh my god even psychic, more psychic even more psychic damage. boy yeah we got counter charm, which is great. Works again very well if you're fighting spellcasters or you're trying to shut someone down. Counter yeah. charm, mantle, mantle of whispers. whispers. This is where we're getting like, all right, capture its shadow. Yeah, you become this person. <laughs> if if you kill these people, you capture their shadow, and then you know all of the information they have for like I believe twenty four hours man Inside. that's messed up <laughs> i know this is the creepiest bard it's yeah we went from james bond to like james bond's villain um yeah. pretty quick <laughs> so um yeah uh we get more expertise we get magical secrets that's totally you um mm -hmm. shadow lord shadow lore. dark magic of your words into a creature's deepest fears this okay we we do get kind of <laughs> yeah yeah at, at fourth level it makes a lot of sense for james bond now we have become maybe we're 006 <laughs> become something quite quite fearsome here yeah and I, I actually kind of like like that because it, it james bond if we're playing like in the real world you know is like definitely not any higher than fourth or fifth level like that's like he's not a demigod james bond is right. a cool action hero but he's not the sort of like demigodly powerful thing that dnd adventures become so like if you take james bond and give him like demigod like power mm -hmm. things do get pretty dark pretty quick <laughs> that's true and that has been like famously and uh, yeah chat was asking what, what, what would be the designation of this and mm -hmm. um oh uh 5e that's his name yeah uh, <laughs> he's Jer jareth beyond 5e uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's his designation oh my god <laughs> it's the cheesiest <laughs> cheesiest thing one of the questions in, in also in chat was uh yes absolutely we for builds character we'll start actually posting these characters that we build um in the youtube video and anywhere else maybe even on social media so you can take a look at these character builds i think that's a great idea oh that's rad yeah, we should definitely do that. That's super fun. You feel good about all this? I mean, oh, really good. I think we've made a super fun character. I, I gotta tell, I gotta tell you, I'm not trying to blow smoke up your rear, but I will say the tavern brawler with psychic blades is amazing. That it worked better than I could have possibly imagined. You can like just grab a candlestick, right, and just like knock someone over yeah. the head. <laughs> Yep, yep. Oh, my brain's full of static. Ugh. You, you yeah. just kill that guy with a candlestick? <laughs> <laughs> like, he's got like a bruise on his forehead, but it's not that bad. Yeah, Blood's it's literally like the ear. Joker pencil trick of like, that oh shouldn't have been as horrible as uh -huh. that one. <laughs> uh, 
you know, you're not, you're not getting that extra combat, you know, that you could get from other bards, but I'm fine with that. I think yeah. this is a very interesting character to play. If I wanted to optimize a little bit more, I might swap his constitution and his strength just so that he's got the plus three strength and the plus one con. But Right, right, right. Makes no. sense, actually. You know what? That's a very good point. Let's go ahead and look at his abilities. So we've got this 12 strength and we've got the 13 dexterity. Were you thinking of swapping those? I was thinking of swapping the 15 constitution and the 12 mm -hmm. strength. Wow. Okay. So we're going, let's go ahead and do that because you are Tavern Brawler now. Mm -hmm. and, and we actually have to go back to that Tavern Brawler feat and give him the little buff to strength instead. To strength instead. Um, and now you are, a, you know, you're a bit more, uh, sorry, I'm doing this very That's okay. There we go. So we go down to the ability thing and we had constitution we're gonna make that strength and now he's a there we pretty go. strong now he punches just a little bit harder now that he's got feels, a, a, yeah. yeah now he's okay this is good the constitution not as good but you are that brawler and mm -hmm. you're way scarier your psychic blades on top of your tavern brawler you know you're doing a 1d4 plus three so you're hitting you're doing four yeah plus the psychic blades so you're always doing six um out of the gate mm -hmm. it's hard for you to fail at doing some pretty nasty damage i gotta yeah. say um wow 1d4 plus plus three plus your psychic blades is yeah rough. that's pretty wild yeah and oh my god once you get to fifth level and you can start like refreshing the bardic inspiration on a short rest uh, that psychic blades gets so out yeah of control. that's it, awesome you got this 2d6 psychic damage that you can do um, it scales, and you know, doesn't it? Would you click on the psychic psychic blades feature? I want to see when it goes up in damage. Uh, at fifth level, I, yeah, yeah, at fifth level, it's going to pop back up. So then, then you're looking at three d six plus your one d four plus three. Yeah, this is um, wicked out of control. I love it. Yeah, and then um, just click away because you know we've got these lovely flyout menu menus. Um, what am I looking? Something caught my eye. It really is. I like the intimidation stuff now better with this subclass choice because you're a tavern brawler who can hit people with candlesticks and kill them. <laughs> so yeah, there's there, the character may have changed a little bit here, but like, and look at your skills. Um, they're amazing. You got mm -hmm. plus three here. You got plus one, plus five. Yeah, and all of those skills, you can see the uh, proficiency bubble like half filled in because we're getting half. Our exactly. It, it will anyway. tell you. Yeah. So I hover over performance. You have half proficiency, which bards get. They're good mm -hmm. at everything, um, and that means half your proficiency bonus that you get overall for your class. So you're getting that that nice little bump. Here's your expertise. This is the circle within a you know circle, and that's the plus seven. Oh so you're gosh. really nasty at this stuff. Um, and of course, your ability modifiers all, mm -hmm. you know, filter into all of this. This is a fantastic build. Joey, James, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate this. This is a very inspiring character. Yeah, it was great to be on the show, Todd. I had no idea this guy would turn out uh, as cool as he did just from uh, me saying James Bond pastiche. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> we did a great job. I'm really happy with it. Yeah, it's very fun. Let's see. Did I miss anything uh, from chat? It looks like I didn't. Uh, everyone, uh, be sure to follow us on Twitch or even subscribe. Subscribe Subscribers get a bunch of really cool emotes. We have a new butter emote. We have a little bush with eyes, which is a reference to Penelope Half Fight, which is lovely. Um, obviously, we have the encounter builder, which I got to tell you, it, as a dungeon master, is hugely helpful. Um, and it also has a combat tracker as well. And coming up uh, very soon, I'm hoping uh, we have the dice roller. And that's got to be cool. That's going to happen right on your character sheet. And uh, I believe subscribers get first shot at that as well. Cool. So am I missing anything else? Wait, what do you got going on for articles? Um, as usual, the new player's guide will continue. Uh, this week, uh, tomorrow, in fact, you're going to see a new player's guide on tactical combat. D&D &D, uh, works really well in a theater of the mind style. But some people, you might want to get really uh, into the gritty part of uh turn by turn combat so i want to give people everything they need to do great uh in that play style that's fantastic all right uh thank you everyone stay safe we love you all keep playing a whole bunch of D, &D and we hope you enjoyed this character concept and we'll hopefully post it somewhere so you can find it and play with it yourself all right thanks everyone for watching <laughs>